It's another big hitting top five for you now. And this week, we're looking at our top five enduro bikes for 2021. While the 2020 EWS season was a little different to usual, and the 2021 season may or may not quite go to plan, it's not stopped some big brands dropping some hot new longer travel rigs. Before we delve too far though, you know the score by now. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. What happens when you take one of the most successful enduro bikes ever and mate it with your big hitting downhill bike? You end up with a super burly enduro bike ready to tackle some of the gnarliest super enduro tracks around. That's what Nuke Proof have done with the Giga, merging the Mega that's won pretty much everything under Sam Hill and Elliot Heap and their Descent downhill bike. Like the Mega, the more downhill orientated Giga gives you the option of larger 29 or smaller 27.5 inch wheels, offering 170 or 180 millimeters of travel respectively. The frame is smart too. Undo the main pivot bolt and you can switch the suspension between a more or less progressive back end. With a coil shock, it's kind of like the equivalent of adding an extra volume spacer to an air shock. There's plenty more on how the suspension is designed to help you charge through the chunder at warp speed, but you'll have to pop to bikeradar.com for the full rundown, as this video simply isn't long enough. Before we move on though, we thought it worth quickly mentioning the sleeved internal cable routing, use of SRAM's universal derailleur hanger, a recessed bottle cage that'll fit larger bottles, and the neat integrated mug guard to keep your pivots nice and happy. We're pretty sure we'll be seeing a Giga atop plenty of enduro podiums this year. The 160mm Travel Rocky Mountain Altitude is an enduro race bike that's already proven it can reach the heady heights of EWS top steps under Jesse Melamed. In Rocky Mountain's own words, the Altitude is a bike that's competitive on today's racetracks while still being a ton of fun for those getting out on the weekends. Sounds good to us. It's not uncommon these days for bikes to have variable geometry. In fact, most of the bikes in this list will have some way of altering their shape or suspension to suit different riders or tracks. But nine different geometries? Yes, the Altitude is a shape-changing monster of a bike with a set of geometry trips that give nine incremental adjustments to the shape of the bike. Okay, so the changes aren't massive. From the slackest to the steepest head angle setting, you get a 1.1 degree change. But more is always better, right? If you're lucky enough to fall into the medium height camp, you also get to choose your wheel size. There are small and medium bikes with 27.5 inch wheels, while 29er hoops appear on another version of the medium, as well as large and extra large versions. Rocky Mountain's engineers have also made sure that the suspension's tune on each size roughly matches the expected rider's weights of those sizes, so it shouldn't end up too firm or too squidgy. It's certainly a unique looking bike. Number three on our list is the Forbidden Dreadnought. If you hadn't noticed, the chain takes a slightly longer route than normal to get to the rear wheel. From the chainring, it loops over an idler pulley located around the main suspension pivot that's located much higher than we'd normally see on a linkage actuated single pivot design. So why have Forbidden done this? Well, the high pivot gives a much more rearward initial axle path to the suspension's travel. As such, when you're rattling down a track and you hit a rock or route, the rear wheel travels much more backward and up than a normal wheel might. This robs less speed and feels smoother, letting you deal with whatever's coming up next. Now, when the back end compresses, that rearward axle path means the length of the back end grows massively. If you had a normal chain routing, you'd get huge amounts of pedal kickback as the chain pulls on the cranks to account for this growth. Hence, running the chain over the main pivot means that this can be controlled and allows Forbidden to tune the pedaling characteristics too. Smart, huh? While we're seeing more and more high pivot plus idler bikes in the downhill world, is the Forbidden Dreadnought a sign of things to come in the enduro world too? Only time will tell. White's latest gravity enduro bike is the G180. And no, you guessed it wrong. It has 170 millimeters of rear wheel travel. However, if you buy the 29er version of this bike, you get a 180mm RockShox Zeb propping up the front end. If, though, you prefer to shred on smaller hoops, you get a simply ridiculous 190mm of travel out of the Zeb at the front of the 27.5 inch bike. That's only a centimetre off the travel you'd expect on a lot of World Cup downhill bikes. So hopefully, 
That gives you a little indication of what White intend their G180 to be capable of. Both wheel sized bikes use a 29er Z fork though, so if you buy the 27.5 inch version, White say you can easily plug in a 29 inch front wheel and a new lower headset cup and successfully run it as a mullet. If the thought of 180 or 190mm forks is just too much for the slippy turns in your local woods, have a look at their T160 trail enduro bike. You might have guessed that has 150mm of rear wheel travel, but still looks very very capable nonetheless. While a lot of the bikes on this list reach prices you could genuinely buy a really rather nice car with, the white's aluminium frame helps keep the bikes relatively good value. The top end bike with ultimate level suspension from RockShox, SRAM's X01 drivetrain and code RSC brakes, decent DT Swiss wheels with sticky Maxxis rubber comes in at £5,150. Now hold your eye, that's not cheap, but it's also not approaching five figures for their top end bike. The Slash was one of the first true enduro focus 29ers and certainly had plenty of success under riders such as Katie Winton and Florian Nikolai. However, times move on and the previous generation Slash wasn't quite cutting it with the latest generation enduro rigs. That's all changed though with the new Slash, which now features geometry that's bang up to date. It's slacker at the front, longer in the middle and steeper under the saddle. All good things. Trek might not have been the first to offer integral downtube storage in their bikes, but with the Wisconsin brand managing to bore out a hole in their alloy downtubes, they're certainly one of the few offering on even base level models. In the UK, that means you can stuff your 2,950 pound alloy slash sevens downtube with as many bananas as you can fit. Trek have also done some work on the bike suspension. The main pivot on their ABP linkage has been moved to give additional pedaling stability. The ABP linkage has the rear pivot rotating concentrically around the rear axle, meaning it acts almost like a single pivot when it comes to pedaling, but more like a four bar linkage under braking, as the brake caliper is not connected to the rear swing arm. They've also stuck with their through shaft proprietary shock tech on most models, but have dropped their regressive reactive damping technology to boost sensitivity. To learn more about these aspects, pop over to Bike Radar for the full lowdown. So there we have it, our top enduro bikes for 2021. For sure, we've missed some out, but we hope we've given you an insight into some of the biggest new bikes this year. Let us know in the comments which we've missed and which are on your next bike shortlist. Oh, and as ever, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video.